Thank you for tuning into Sin's Workshop. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. So today we're going to be talking about The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. This is Katie Hayes' debut novel. And um, a little backstory on Katie Hayes because it's important to the story. She is an adjunct um, art history professor. So the story does draw from a lot of her background. It follows Anne. Now she's just graduated, um, I think, with her master's or her PhD in um, art history. I can't remember that one, that one tiny little detail, but she's on her way to the Met. You know, once in a lifetime opportunity. She wants to be a cur curator there. She studied Renaissance art. And unfortunately, things kind of fall through. Now she doesn't have a backup plan. And she does not want to go back home. And the reason being is because her father died sometime in the summer in August. And every time she's home, she's just kind of reminded that he's not there. And the thing is, language, um, because she knows multiple languages, like that was her thing, that was her passion, like taking pieces of, I guess, archaic or ancient languages and finding out where they came from you know, deriving them. She became so talented at that, you know, it's what one of her specialties. Also important. <laughs> it's important for the story. But, you know, it's just, she can't go back home. She's still reeling from the death of her father. So she's at the Met. She no longer has a position there because the person she's going to be working under took another position someplace else. In comes Peter offers her a position at the Cloisters, a gothic museum with its own botanical garden full of poisonous plants, one of which is Belladonna. And it's just from there, it's such an atmospheric and intense read. I mean, it's, it's about this big. It's not a big book, super easy to read, and you are just lured in with the atmosphere. You know, you're following Anne. They're trying to look for clues, pieces of an ancient tarot deck, 15th century. Now, Peter, that's what he specializes, specializes in, the history of the divine, divinity. You know, the occult in some ways. And he's looking for this deck. He's 100% sure it exists. And Anne starts to discover it does. He's getting pieces, but she swipes a, um, a card of his deck because underneath it is the deck he's looking for. It's so intense, and I love the character arc that Anne goes on. She kind of goes from this lost, lonely, kind of mousy girl, and then she becomes this phenomenal character. She becomes more daring, more sure of herself, because she is brilliant. I don't know why she doesn't think she's brilliant enough. She is brilliant, and she starts to see her own brilliance. She starts to gain an edge. She starts to, in a way, follow Rachel's footsteps, be like, this is what I want. I'm going to go get it. She becomes a go-getter, and it's, really, really well done. I mean, for me, I was just drawn in by that atmosphere and that tension. It's such an intense read, right from beginning to end. I mean, the book's first line is, death, or August finds me, in August, death seems to find me. You know, it starts with the death, you're, in, you're invested in the mystery, like, who's dead? Why are they dead? And then, you know, you get these little pieces like, okay, did she kill that person? Did he kill her? Who's going to die? And then when you do see that death occur, then you're just like, okay, why did XYZ kill this person? Did XYZ kill this person? You know, you're trying to figure it out. You're invested in that mystery. You're invested in Anne's journey. You're invested in the atmosphere. This very gothic atmosphere about a girl who's studying art and you're seeing her love of art and the architecture and her 
just the honest of it all. I mean, ugh. Ah, the detail. I do love the detail, you know. The detailing when it comes to the sort of artwork and the history behind the artwork. It was so well done. And it doesn't bog down the story, you know. There's lots of technicals in the story, but it adds to the story rather than taking away. And it's not so heavy-handed. It's important because it fits within Anne's narrative. This is what she does. This is what she's studying. This is what she wants to do with the rest of her life. So those little bits and pieces of her studying artwork or admiring the detailing on a sculpture and remarking on the historical context of a tarot card, it's just really, really engaging because you also become invested as well in her journey and you want her to succeed by the end of it and by the end uh first of all plot twist was jaw dropping i mean when i got to that plot twist my coworker who read the book i'm like oh my god bomb dropped it was a bomb dropping in that moment like what and then when you got to the very very end you're just like out of girl bravo bravo um, it was really, really, really well done, and it was so executed. I mean, the prose, the tone, the atmosphere, it's gothic, it's mysterious, it's thrilling. It is 4 out of 5 stars, 4.5 out of 5 stars. It was just so well done, well executed. I got the book for free, ended up buying it. <laughs> I got the arc from the publisher, read it like that. And, um, yeah, no, I ended up buying it because I'm like, you know what? I need to own this book and gift this art so that other people can share with my joy. <laughs> so, yeah, four and a half out of five stars. If you want to go ahead and purchase the book, um, I will include links in the description below on where to purchase. And on that note, um, please do not forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share it with all your bookcoming friends. You can also become a supporter on buying me a coffee um, with a one-time donation or by purchasing one of my handmade candles. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and as always, happy reading.